Hey guys, this is Fergal from Poker VIP, and welcome to part one of Have You Got the Guts, the tournament edition. So, as you can see, we are playing some tournaments, some MTTs over on Guts Poker. We're going to be playing four tournaments throughout the duration. Uh, we're going to be playing these four MTTs, and then if and when I bust any, we will look at supplementing them with some sit and goes. So, for the entire duration of this, this series, we shall be playing the tournaments. So, let's jump straight into the action. Very, very nice starting hand over on the top right table, of course. The best starting hand. So obviously we're going to raise this up. We're going to make it 185. Uh, as the blind levels do go up a little bit, we will be reducing our raise sizes. So let's see if we get some action here with the AC AC. Uh, with the Jack 4, we got to check in the big blind of the trash hand. We have not connected in any way, shape or form with the flop. We're not going to be doing anything further there. So far, nothing good is happening in the ace's hand, which is a shame. And we're going to raise it up with the ace two suitor from the bottom. Uh, we got a caller. We definitely like getting a caller. It is not the best of the boards for us by any stretch, but it's definitely not the worst either. Um, this guy dunks into us, which is a bit peculiar. I'm going to go ahead and raise here for value. So he calls, which is fine by us. I wouldn't have been thrilled if he had opted to re-raise. He can definitely have sets and so on that will play that way. Uh, we are going to keep betting for value here. And he goes ahead and he folds. I'm guessing he could have easily had a hand just kind of like 6x. The reason I wanted to keep betting there was because if he has a 6, there's a reasonable chance he has a straight draw to go along with it. Uh, we've improved two trip aces. We are going to bet for value on the bottom right table. And we are going to triple barrel. We're going to bet an amount here that we basically want him to pay us off with any pair. So we're going to go just under 400 into 750 in around half pot and see if he can call us off with an 8 or maybe some pocket pair. He decides not to. Which definitely doesn't surprise me, but obviously that was what we were going for. We would have preferred to get the call. Uh, it, it is possible we're behind there as well. Just because he hasn't raised doesn't mean that we like you know we don't exactly have the nuts there or anything close to it. Uh, he can definitely call us there and ju just call with like better ace x. But he didn't, which is fine by us. Uh, we opened up with the nine and the king. This guy dunks out in the ace high board. This is the guy that no sorry this is not the guy who dunked out earlier. So. Potentially a bit of a trend in these tournaments, players sort of min dunking on those kinds of boards, but we shall see if that continues throughout and adjust our strategy accordingly against it if it is. But for now we're happy just to give him credit and fold when I mean there's not there's no like I mean if, if we're behind there if he has an ace we're drawing to run a runner, which is a disaster, so there's not tons that we can do. Uh so this guy five X is it we're nice and deep. We are going to go ahead and call. I'm not thrilled about re raising a five X here. Uh, we're just going to be check folding this flop if he bets. Given a sizing pre, if he does bet, yeah, I was about to say, I wouldn't be shocked if he goes kind of close to pot and he goes exactly pot. We are just going to check and fold. Uh, potentially an a king or a queen there would not have been particularly fantastic for us. So we definitely don't mind just check folding. Like when someone five X's and follows through with a pot on the flop, um, they can definitely have a lot of nutted hands in their range there. Uh, pretty standard open here with the ace and the jack. Flop top pair, which is fine by us. We're going to bet it. And we are going to keep betting. We can get called by worse ace x. We can get called by hearts. Uh, if the player is particularly bad, he might even call with some kind of good shots, kind of like king queen type hands, which would be fine by us as well. Uh, we've late, we've late raged one of properly late ranged one of the tournaments, this one up on the top left, so we're a little bit short stacked here, but we still have 26 big blinds, which is fine. But if just something to be conscious of, we're a little bit shorter up in this tournament than we are in all of the others. Uh, we flop top pair here. I mean, if we're somehow beat here, there is a pretty reasonable chance we go broke. Uh, we are going to bet it for value. And we opened up the king and the six. On the top right table, uh, we flop top pair. 
We are going to bet it. Uh, a lot of the time I'll check back my marginal top pairs here, but given that there are a decent number of gut shots and so on that he can have with his pairs, can have hands like 10 jack, 10 queen, 9 queen, those types of hands, um, we want to make sure that we charge them. And we hit two pair, which is wonderful news for us. Now we are very, very much happy to bet for value. And we're going to put in a squeeze in the bottom right table with the ace jack. That jack is a disastrous card for us. Uh, obviously any queen makes it straight now. He can have a king jack in his range as well, which is very upsetting. And he goes out and he donks half pot. This is a bit of an unfortunate hand for us. We are just going to go ahead and make the fold. I think it's very unlikely he's doing that with worse. And we get no action with the kings in the bottom left table, which is never what we want, but hey. These things are going to happen. Uh, we three bet here with the ace and the jack. We are going to fire here. And... There's a pretty decent chance we're going to bet small on a lot of turns as well if we get check called. We block a lot of his queen x, which is good news for us. Uh, he's going to stick around for one street with all of his marginal pairs. If he has a hand like, say, 8s, 9s, 10s, even 6s, he might decide to float once. And we are going to go ahead and fire another street here. We have the ace of diamonds blocker, which is good when we get called here because he's going to have a lot more of those kind of marginal one pair hands that we can put him under tons of pressure. Whereas if he has flush draws, I don't think he's planning on folding the flop, especially the nut high flush draw. Now we're just going to flat the ace jack this time. And with the ace and the queen of the same suit, pretty standard open up at the top right table. Uh, we get one caller. Unfortunate that he is the player on the button because it means that he has position on us, but hey. We are going to fire here. Again, we have a lot of good blockers to his king x. It's pretty likely he would have 3-bet ace-king, but we block king-queen, and he can, I mean, he can definitely have king-jack and stuff like that, though. Uh, this board on the bottom right checks through. We're going to lead out here on the ace-high turn. Uh, we're going to check give up here now when we do get called in this flop. The diamond completing is pretty bad. It puts four to a straight on the board as well, which is awful news for us. And so we're just going to check and see what happens. Turns out we actually value better ace queen there, which is always fun when you get a value bluff in. I mean, when he when he decides to bet here, like when he, when he check calls here. He either has some sort of draw or some sort of showdown value. I think it's very unlikely he's turning worse showdown value into a bluff and pretty much every single draw has gotten there. So we're just going to go ahead and let this one go. A bit of an unfortunate spot. Uh, we turn second pair in the bottom left table. We were we checked back with the intention of bluffing a lot of turns. Now there's no need to bluff anymore, so we're going to check this back and just look to get our hand to show down. If he checks again to us, we'll bet for value. If he ch if he bets, we just call. He overbets, which is concerning. I was going to call any normal bet. Um, we don't know anything about this player. I mean, it doesn't make any sense for him to be overbetting for value here because we have such few hands, so few hands that can actually call. But my guess is that he is probably not thinking on that level. And there's a like, but it just doesn't make sense to have a flush here. We're gonna fold, but I'm not happy about that. I mean, I think it's definitely possible that we got bluffed off there. But if we did, so be it. But as I said, it, it doesn't really make sense for him to be overbet valuing, like overbetting for value there just purely because we look so weak. So when he does overbet, it just makes me think that it's pretty likely he's bluffing, but it's a, that's dangerous logic to be playing when you don't know what kind of player he is and what kind of level he's thinking on, because a lot of players, they will only be overbetting for value, even in spots where they clearly shouldn't be. And if you start making light call downs versus overbets against that type of player, uh, just because it's a bad spot for them to be overbetting for value, you'll end up just absolutely value only yourself in too many spots. So we'll wait until we have a little bit more information on the players at the table. Unfortunately, the king six would have given us close to the nuts, but obviously we're not going to be too upset about that. We don't uh, we don't get upset about making correct folds just because they would have turned into strong hands, obviously. Uh, king tray from mid position. There is nothing we're going to be doing there. We're just going to be letting this hand go.
And we're going to ice foot up here with the king and the queen versus the under the gun limper. And we're just going to be betting for value here. This player seems like he is pretty weak all around. Um, if he has the best hand here, it's likely to be, be king jack or maybe pocket trays, but we're pretty much ahead of basically everything else. So we're going to be betting for value accordingly. And we're going to flat the ace jack here versus this player who so far has been very, very active over a small sample. It's only five hands though, so we're definitely not going to be making any any sort of assessments on that just yet. So we flop a good shot to the nuts and we have the backdoor flush draw as well. We're deep enough that we can certainly peel one street here and if we bink, fantastic. If it goes check check then we can look to bluff rivers when we break off. And unfortunately he, followed through, he follows through with the second barrel so we're just going to let this one go. So because we're playing tournaments today, we're not sure how many videos we're going to get just yet. It kind of depends on how the tournaments go. As I said, I'm going to be supplementing in sit and goes as we bust, but we'll, we'll play until we wrap up these four tables though. So Jack-9 suited here, if it is fold, as long as there's no raise here, we will certainly be calling and seeing a flop. We're just getting too good a price not to. And we have a pretty hand. We're calling 146 in to win 784, and we don't have a hand that we're going to get into tons of trouble with. I mean, if we flop a lone 9 or a lone jack on a top pair board and we're beat, so be it. We are almost certainly going to be going broke, but in general, it's the sort of hand that's going to be relatively easy to play post-flop, especially for this sort of stack depth. And we called here on the button with the suited connectors, with the seven, or suited semi-gapper, should I say, with the seven and nine. We flop a pair, not really the kind of board we were looking for. If someone bets here, we're not going to be investing more chips in. Uh, if we get on op option options to check, we will happily do so and see if we can prove two trips or two pair. Unfortunately, this guy does lead, but as I said, trying to put more money in there after bad is going to be a mistake. It's a four-handed pot. The chances of us being ahead right now are pretty slim. Obviously, we're getting an okay price to draw, but I mean, it's there's no guarantee that we are drawing to the best hand. It's entirely possible someone has a straight or someone already has two pair or potentially even trips, although that's unlikely when this player leads as he only flatted the raise preflop. But, you know, it's just one of those spots where even if we do improve, we're still not like in love with our hand, so... Trying to call to, to two pair up or trip up seems like a mistake to me. Uh, the queen and the eight, if it's folded to us, we may go for a jam. We're getting quite short stacked here. Uh, big blind of 150 and we've got 2.3k. There is under the gun raise though. We're obviously not going to be putting any chips in versus that player. Uh, with the raggedy ace though we are going to open versus this player who so far has been one of the worst player one of the worser players that we've seen he seems very very loose and not all that competent post flop from what we've seen so far which we absolutely do not mind and uh, we're going to go for an all in here with the ace 10 and uh, we could consider just raising but if i mean if we raise we have to call off we don't want to encourage hands like even hands where we're like a little bit ahead you know, king queens, those types of hands. Uh, not the worst of flops for us. Let's see if we can get there. We do not. Fortunately, it's a rebuy tournament though, so we can just jump straight back in. Uh, but yeah, as I said, we don't really want to encourage jams from hands like queen, queen like king queen, king ten. Those, those there you sorry, king ten. Obviously, we're happy with, but like those kinds of broadways that will usually have pretty good equity against us. Like Jack Queen suited, King Queen suited, King Jack suited, all those types of hands, they can definitely re jam, but some players may fold into the initial jam because they don't they have no fold equity. So we're happy to just put the all in raise in ourselves rather than having to raise call it off versus those potential types of hands. Uh, 10 6 suited, not much we're going to be able to do there, so we just let it go. So 
So we have our first bust out, which a little bit earlier than we would have liked, but obviously this was the table that it was always likeliest to happen on, given that it was the one that we lay regged and the blinds are getting that little bit bigger. Uh, the, we only started off with the stacks, with the stack size now at 3k, we only have 20 bigs to start off with, so the action is going to be relatively fast and furious. On the other tables, the stack depths are that little bit deeper, so we have that bit more maneuverability, whereas with the 20 big blind stacks, a lot of our decisions are going to be all in our fold preflop. Uh, Ace trace suited here. We're going to raise this up from under the gun a little bit loose, but as I said, this table overall so far hasn't impressed me. We're happy enough to mix it up a little bit and get involved with pots early on and look to chip up effectively. We take it down. We definitely don't mind that at all. Uh, 8 10 suited. This guy so far has been relatively tight. We are certainly going to call, especially when this guy's come along. We're getting 4 to 1 on our money, so folding seems completely out of the question. And we're not really in love with raising because we're going to be fairly committed to this guy at this point if we do decide to raise, which I'm definitely not in love with getting that kind of that sort of stack of amount in. He's got like 2.4k behind. So if we raise, realistically, we're pot committed to call off against him. But it's a hand that's going to flop perfectly well, so we're happy to call and see a flop. We get to check through and we improve on the turn, which we enjoy a lot. Uh, raising doesn't seem like it accomplishes too much here. We get paid from some flush draws and so on, but in a multi-way pot, I mean, we far from have the nuts here, so we're happy to pot control it a little bit and play rivers accordingly. Uh, that is a fantastic river for us, obviously. And uh, now we are going to be raising. Uh, sizing is kind of interesting. The problem with raising here is like obviously we're 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 repping a ten very very credibly, so I don't think we get too many light calls here, but we do have to try. And it really doesn't surprise me to see the fold there. It's entirely plausible that he had a flush draw and was just trying to get us to fold a better flush draw, basically. So if he has a hand like, say, 8-9 of hearts, for example, and he thinks that we may have had you know, a king high flush draw or an ace high flush draw, he might want to bet there to try to get us to fold those types of hands. And with the deuce and the five, we're just going to be letting this one go. And the blinds have gone up on the top left table. We're down to only 13 bigs. So we're going to need a hand to double up with that pretty quickly. We've been fairly card dead so far. Not the ace-10 hand, the only real hand that we had that we wanted to get involved with. And unfortunately, as you saw, we lost the flip earlier. 9-10 is not going to cut it for a 13 big jam, especially when there's a raise before us. So we were going to be folding this either way, though. And 8-4 on the button, again, nothing we're going to be able to do. Uh, Jack-5, if it's folded to us, we will open versus this player, uh, just because we are... Happy enough to open most two cards, blind versus blind. People tend to overfold, especially in like in tournaments, to a pretty substantial degree. So we take it down a huge percentage of the time without a fight, and we're going to be able to pick this up a decent chunk of the time as well, just with the, with the singular C bet on the flop. Uh, if he does call us on the flop, we're like which he will obviously have some percentage of the time for sure. If he does call us though, we are just going to give it up unless we improve on the turn. But we take it down, which is fine by us, of course. Uh, the king and the queen is a likely contender to be played here. So we have two options. We can flat or we can 3-bet. I haven't seen this guy face a 3-bet just yet. Uh, given the stack depths, I'm more inclined to flat here. 3-bets can get a little bit awkward at this kind of stack depth. 
So we're going to call, we're going to see some flops, and we're going to react accordingly then. We're not going to give this one up just yet because it's a board that he's going to have whiffed a huge percentage of the time. Uh, our raise here, I mean, it doesn't wreck too much value, but we can have a lot of draws and stuff like that that he's going to be reluctant to get kind of random high cards in against. So this check, this check raise should work a reasonable chunk of the time. We also have all of the sets in our range. And as I said, it, it'll get him to fold pretty much all of his ace highs normally. Sometimes people just go a bit bonkers with those types of hands because they don't believe you. But eh, that's going to be a pretty profitable line in general. And if he does jam, we have a very, very easy fold, of course. But the kind of, the, the, basically, the information that we had on this guy, only, it's only over 14 hands, but he looks like he's like incredibly aggressive. So we have a 10 and a king of the same suit. We have 13 big blinds. We're about to hit the big blind next. We are going to ship it from under the gun. Let's see if we can, I mean, if we just take this down without a fight, we are pretty happy. Although this guy only has 108 chips, there's a pretty reasonable chance he's sticking around. But that's not a disaster for us at all. It does make this jam slightly less appealing though, because it means that a decent percent of the time we're going to have to win it showdown to win the entire pot. We don't though, that's that's a much better result than him calling. Even if even if we know that we have a, a substantially better hand, it's much better that he calls there rather or that he folds there rather than calls it off. Just given the price he's getting. Uh, jack four, we are not going to be folding to any raise. If this guy goes all in, we're going to be all in against him regardless of what happens anyway, because he has less than a big blind. Uh, this guy three x's it, which is generally the sign of a weaker tournament player when they're 3xing it at this kind of stack depth. There's just no reason for it. 6-9 uh, is not going to be good enough to jam blind versus blind, and I'm really not a fan of raise folding from these stack depths at all, so we're just going to let this one go. I don't like giving people walks in tournaments though, with these like when every single pot is pretty substantial. Pretty interesting spot here because there's less incentive for people to raise light, so it's going to be folded around to us a little bit more often. And uh, we have, you know, the computer hand, the average hand. We are going to put in an ever so small raise ourselves. Uh, if he folds, then we get the, the de his dead money anyway, and we're getting a pretty damn good price on our gamble versus the big blind. And I don't think he's going to get too fancy here ever. Like we look pretty strong when we just raise from the stack depth. So. We shall see what happens. He does ship it on us, unfortunately. I'm going to assume, yeah, he does. He has a, he has a real hand there, which is makes perfect sense. But I don't think he's going to be getting tricky and kind of, you know, three bet jamming any sort of like, you know, 10 jack suited or any, anything, anything like that. I think like a, a, a very big percentage of the time there, we just get heads up versus the big blind, where we, where we pick up a small, a small pot guaranteed and we have queen seven, which is going to perform perfectly reasonably against a random hand to win a reasonable small pot. Uh, do I want to rebuy? Oh, the add-on period must be over. Yes, I do. So let's just go and see what the add-on is worth. Uh, pretty decent amount actually, 6k for the chips and then an extra 3k for the rebuy that you can do because we're below average, for, because we're below starting stack. So we're actually right back in it now. We're up to 11k, which is kind of sort of changes the dynamics completely. It puts us in with a very reasonable amount of big blinds. I kind of like when tournaments do that because it's sort of, it makes, it makes the entire structure of the tournament change and I'm quite good at adapting to change, whereas a lot of people aren't. They sort of get in the mindset of what level they're playing at the moment and they don't really factor in the variable change for all of the different stack sizes that have come into play. So late reg is over here now and we have 266 euro up for grabs up top on that tournament, which we would love to take down. And I believe late reg is still ongoing in the others, so we won't, we won't investigate the prizes just yet. Q 
wing tray, nothing we're going to be able to do there. Uh, the deuce tray in the bottom right table, we're not going to be defending, even if there was a, even if it was only a min raise, we're still just going to be letting this go. Uh, this guy has three extras, so very, very trivial fold, obviously. Ace nine definitely has some potential to be played, depending on the action for us, though. So we're still going reasonably okay in all tournaments. I can't actually remember what the starting stacks were in each of these. We're gonna go for three bet here versus this guy. We don't want him to feel like he can just run over the table with impunity. This guy overcalls our raise, which is pretty sub sad for us. Uh, he has a pretty damn strong range here as played. We're not going to be c-betting this board. We are going to be happy to check and check fold. If it checks through, there are some cards that we will bet on. But yeah, we're not going to we're not going to be c-betting this board in a multi-way pop. Pocket sixes. We will be calling any single raise, and if it's folded to us, we will be opening ourselves. If there's any limpers, we will be ice wing them. That's our general plan. Uh, queen eight from under the gun in the rebuy in the top left won't be good enough. So we have a singular raise. We are going to call here and see a flop. One of the worst flops for us. Uh, we're not going to be calling any further action here. If he checks, we will be happy to check it back. And if he checks turn to us, we may consider turning our hand into a bluff. He bets just under a third pot. Uh, even against that sizing, we still there's still not much we can do. We're just going to go ahead and fold it. That's not to say we're only calling there to set mine. There are some boards that we will at least see a turn on. But that is, I mean, the ace jack eight, I think it was, is just a pretty damn atrocious board all around for us. So putting any more money in there would definitely be a mistake. Something that we do need to be a little bit wary of is that our own our own reputation on this table has been pretty wild so far. We've been very betty. It's always worth keeping an eye on your own stats at any individual table, just so you kind of have a feel for what your opponents make of you. Uh, here we're getting 4-1. to one. We have Queen-8. We are certainly going to see a flop. We could consider using this hand as a 3-bet bluff, but I think I'm fine calling this as well. Uh, we're going to bet here just because we have top pair and he can have worse single pairs they can call as well as some draws. We're more likely to get called by hands like say King Jack, Ace Jack, those types of hands there. Uh, we're just going to bet for value again here. Unfortunately, we do not get called. We definitely wanted to get called there. We would have been really sad if we had gotten raised, but we're not all that concerned about that. People don't tend to bluff raise too frequently. On rivers, at least. Up an open ender in the bottom left table. We're certainly going to be betting here. Uh, this guy is 2k left behind. If he had opted to make an aggressive play, we would have had a somewhat tricky decision. He does folds, though. When, which we, when we only have queen high, is definitely a fine result for us. And we have an all-in and a re-all-in up at the top left table. Uh, obviously 5 2 so nothing we're going to be able to do there. But potentially an interesting hand here. I'm going to assume that this guy is going to be very, very nutted very, very often. I don't think he is likely to be re-jamming any, any marginal hands. I'd be shocked to see him show up anything worse than pocket 10s or ace-queen suited. And he has the aces. Definitely not surprising. And aces hold. And look, speaking of them aces, we have them ourselves. I was about to call an end to part one, but I feel it would be a disservice to anybody watching the stream or watching the watching the video to call it now, especially because there'll be maybe a thirty second delay between getting the second video recording, so you just miss the entire hand. 
Uh, we have a raise, which we're very happy with. We are going to be going for three bet here. Uh, there's an extra caller behind as well, which is just wonderful news for us. Extra couple of big blinds in the pot. So back around to the original raiser who has a decision to make. The original raiser folds. Let's hope this guy sticks around. Unfortunately, he folds. Still, though, pretty reasonable pot. An extra couple of K added into the stack, which we don't mind at all. So we're going to call it a day there for part one. And as I said, I'm going to be recording part two immediately after this. So if you're enjoying what you see, make sure to check it out when it gets released. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Again, this has been Fergal from Poker VIP.